Now to this. Will it happen? Elon Musk is fueling rumors that podcast host Joe Rogan will interview former President Trump ahead of Election Day. Back in 2023, Rogan teased questions he would ask the former commander in chief. It would be interesting to hear his perspective on a lot of things. I would like to know what is it like when you actually get into office. I would like to know things like what what is it like versus perception? Yeah. What is it actually like when you get in that building? What is the machine that runs this country? Because it's very clear that it's not as simple as elected representatives that are doing the will of the people. It's not. I would listen to that interview. Meanwhile, Vogue is gushing over a Kamala in its October edition. Even after a rough media blitz, the fashion magazine made the Democrat nominee their cover star and wrote in part, quote, only rarely are individuals summoned for acts of national rescue. But in July, Vice President Kamala Harris received one of those calls. I mean, nothing (laughs) says... Uh, get any Leibowitz and, and let's try and save things. I, I will defer. Oh, let me hold that up again. Here it is, Annie Leibowitz. And, and it just says, the candidate for our times. And it's a great photo. It's a great cover. Uh, you know, Melania Trump, I don't believe, ever ended up on Vogue. But let me start with you, Nicole. What do you make of this? Is, is this going to woo women? Woo women? No, I don't think so. I will agree with you. Actually, I really like this picture. I thought it was a stunning photograph, and I think the cover looks nice. I think that the... <clears throat> The verbiage is a little interesting there. That They said that she was called for a national rescue. Who is she rescuing us from? The Biden administration, which she is number two a part of, who, and just recently, as of this week, has said, I wouldn't do anything different than Joe Biden has done. So we're calling upon her to rescue us from herself. And rarely do you actually call upon the person who caused the problem to fix the problem. I don't know. It's a little confusing. You, you raise a great, great point. And actually, there were basically four specific soft interviews that Harris did this week. And we have a montage of the flubs, if you will, in her media blitz. Take a listen. Madam Vice President. Alex. Welcome to Call Her Daddy. It is good to be with you. The last time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so okay, cheers. There cheers. You there you go. <laughs> Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, There is not a thing that comes to mind. If he wins, God forbid, would you feel safe in this country? Would you stay in this country? Howard, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he does not win. Now, the New York Times basically praised her being artful. She, they said this. This week, Ms. Harris put her own stamp on the art of the Dodge. A trained prosecutor, Ms. Harris is lawyerly, argumentative, and fundamentally defensive. She often deflects or sidesteps. She can speak, speak passionately about her values in a way that leaves the listeners feeling as if the question had been acknowledged, even if the substance remained unaddressed. Lisa? Well, I think first and foremost, Donald Trump should 100% do Joe Rogan. He has something like 14.5 million followers uh, who follow his podcast on Spotify. And I think the Trump campaign has been really smart about utilizing alternative means for earned media with these podcasters, as well as that interview he did on X, because it allows Americans to see Donald Trump for who he is. And he's actually a super likable guy, despite how the media tries to portray him. But regarding Kamala Harris, I mean, she's in such a troubling spot because if she doesn't do interviews, she looks weak. If she does them, voters are reminded that they don't like her. And it reminds me of the the movie Mean Girls, and it's like, stop trying to make Fetch happen. Like, they keep (laughs) trying to convince Americans that somehow she's relatable, that she's likable, but she's just not. And the numbers before her accidental nomination demonstrate that. I mean, she spent $40 million in 2019 to come in at 3% in December of 2019. At one point last year, NBC had her polling the the least amount of any vice president in that poll's history. You look at even her own staff, they hate her. 90% of her staff turned over while she's been the vice president in just a three-year period of time. So stop trying to make fetch happen. People do not like Kamala Harris. The more they put her out, the more people are going to be reminded of that. Well, hold on. And it goes beyond likability. Let's also remember, under the Biden administration, which, again, Kamala Harris, number two, and she says that she's always been in the room with the decisions, eight to 10 million illegal immigrants across the border, the highest inflation in over, like, 40 years. I mean, it's a policy thing, too. People do not want those policies. No one wants another four years of it. But, Griff, you listen to her. So she said the last time I had a beer was with my husband, Doug, right? I think she was drinking wine in the green room before the interview. She sounds like she's loaded when she comes out on 
stage. Um, that doesn't give anybody really uh, any confidence. And I think on the, the day that picture was taken on Vogue, I think that was the very same day that she was in a fight with Ron DeSantis over Ron not taking a phone call. So Ron's dealing with a storm hitting his state, the second one in a week's time, and she's taking a Vogue, Vogue, Vogue cover photo and fighting with the governor. It, who's it was also this. October 7th, a year after the massacre. Yeah, that's a good point. And by the way, you know, when the New York Times is saying she's great, artful at the Dodge, it's been more than 80 days since she's decided not to hold a press conference with reporters and journalists to just ask about the news of the day and the issues. So perhaps they should wait until that but happens. But I, I do want to play there, for there's, you. There's nothing brilliant about a Dodge. People want to hear, people are suffering. They want to hear policies to say, what do you think, Kamala? How are you going to fix this problem? I want to compare that to Donald Trump's ideas on how to fix the problem. And I want to compare the two. You dodge, you get nothing from it. By the way, just quickly on um, Joe Rogan. I don't know how many undecided, undecided voters are out there. I don't really know that many of them. I think what they're really doing with the Rogan interview is trying to energize the base of your party to show up and vote. It's, this is a get your voters out to the polls. That's who's going to win. Who Democrats always have that, that. over Yeah, I, I want to get this in here, uh, Sean, and, and you know James Carville, the guy that wrote the book on It's the Economy Stupid during the Clinton years. He's worried about where the race stands right now. Listen to this. The only thing I feel is the elections come in November 5th. And I'm scared to death. They need to be sharp. They need to be aggressive. They need to stop answering questions and start asking questions. They're doing all this and sitting down with 60 Minutes and sitting down with Colbert and sitting down with... No matter what, if I come on your show, you're going to ask me the question. That's true. If I have a press conference, I get to ask the question. You'd like to see her do more press conferences? I'd like for her to put more things in place. Yeah, he didn't want to answer that directly, but Lisa, you were giving me a reaction here while that was playing, so I got to go to you. <laughs> well, the challenge for Kamala Harris is she's a manufactured candidate. You know, as I, I pointed out, people have rejected her time after time. She was an accidental nominee, and so the media can only prop her up so much. And now that Americans are starting to see her, you know, they don't like her. They they reject her. And the challenge for her is she's simultaneously trying to paint the picture for or that, oh, I'm a forward-leaning candidate. You know, this is a new page, a new start, yada, yada, yada while also saying I wouldn't change anything about what Joe Biden has done, what we've done with the Biden administration, despite the fact that those policies have been rejected, despite the fact that the majority of Americans believe we're heading in the wrong direction. So she's trying to speak out of all, you know both sides of her mouth all over the place. So it's just it's, it's, it's an it's, incoherent message for an incoherent woman who's just totally unserious at a very serious time. It's a great point, Lisa. In the article, and I read the whole thing, this is the Vogue, beautiful picture, the reporter said... What, if you win, what's the first call you make when you're in the Oval Office? And she said, after my family, I would call my team to say, how do we lower these prices? Well, who's Which left? would be from left. the policies of the past four years. We've got to leave it there. We could go on all night long. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.